hi and welcome to my third video in the series about mutations and disease and today we're going to be looking at some key terms. Um, so the first key term that we're going to look at um, is a gene. And so a gene is a section of DNA that codes for a particular protein and so within, it, within a human you have roughly 23,000 genes um, and so obviously each one of those genes codes for a specific protein or making part of a protein or a polypeptide chain. Um, and so you have here an example of this and so here you've got your basic structure of DNA um, and these are your nucleotide bases, these bits in red and so on an average gene, so for instance if we were looking um, at the, what, the CFTR gene and um, the code for the CFTR protein that's made of several thousand um, of nucleotide bases. So a, a version of a gene is what's known as an allele and so for instance if we were looking at cystic fibrosis again, you might have the allele for being healthy and you might also have the allele for having cystic fibrosis. Um, and so you can get many versions of genes. And so for instance, eye colour is a good example of this. You can have many, many um, different versions of a gene for different eye colours. Um, and so you can see here the position um, of these alleles on the chromosomes and you can see these here are in the same position, um, which you'd normally expect to find on the chromosome pair. The next term um, is the genotype, and that's the combination of alleles an organism has. So, for instance, they're usually represented by letters, so big B, small b, or big F, small f. The phenotype is how that's expressed, and so how that's expressed within the organism. And so, blue eyes, for instance, brown eyes, whether you've got cystic fibrosis or not, uh, whether you don't have cystic fibrosis, are um, all examples of phenotypes. A dominant allele um, is one known, or if you have a dominant um, section is only when one allele needs to be present for the characteristic to be expressed. And so in this case, it's always represented by letters that are uppercase. Um, an example of this uh, might be if you had the dominant allele for eye colour, which was, let's say, brown, for example, and then the recessive eye colour, which might be blue, you'd only need one um, brown because it's the dominant one for it to be expressed. Um, which takes us on to recessive, where both alleles need to be present for the characteristic to be expressed. And so you need two of them. Um, so an example of that is cystic fibrosis. You need both cystic fibrosis alleles in order to have the condition. Um, a homozygote, um, that's where you have, for a particular um, characteristic, you have the two alleles um, which are the same. So for instance, big C, big C, that could also be small c, small c, or big F, big F some examples of that. A heterozygote, that's where the two alleles for a particular characteristic are different, so big C, small c, or big S, small f. And now we come to um, a monohybrid um, inheritance, so that's a genetic cross where you only consider a single gene at a time. And so for this qualification, um, we only ever look at monohybrid inheritance. And so an example of this is um, a monohybrid inheritance for two carriers of cystic fibrosis. Now, the previous video, we went over um, some of the symptoms and how cystic fibrosis is caused and so it's an inherited disease and so it's received from um, your parents and so here we're going to go through what a, a genetic cross would look like for two carriers of cystic fibrosis um, so what this leads on to is the idea of um, the alleles that cause cystic fibrosis here the large one F that's healthy so that's the dominant one the small F um, is the one that causes cystic fibrosis and is recessive and so in order to have the condition you need both um, recessive alleles and so you can have a carrier for this disease because you can have the genotype big F small f um, and be a carrier for the condition and not have any of the symptoms of it and so the first line that you always write down will be um, what the alleles are and then the F1 phenotype for the people being crossed, and so in this case they're both carriers. You could also possibly put these as healthy. The F1 genotype, um, that would be big F, small f in both instances because they're carriers. And now the next line down is the gametes, and so this is what the sex cells contain. And so in all sex cells they only have half the genetic information, and so in half the gametes, um, for let's say the father, half the sperm will contain the healthy allele and half the sperm will contain the ones that contain cystic fibrosis and the same is true for the mother's eggs so in this instance half contains the healthy allele half for the recessive cystic fibrosis causing allele 
Um, here you have a Punnett square. I've just drawn um, the gametes along the top two here and the gametes for the father's sperm here. And these are the possibilities um, that you can get for this genetic cross. These are the different genotypes um, that you can get. And so that gives us an F2 genotype and that refers to um, the second generation, the F1 being the first generation. You can get these possibilities. So you can get an individual with a genotype big F, big F. You can get two individuals with big S, small F. Um, I'll just flip back to that. The reason why it's two is because well, there's two of them there. And then you get one individual that has um, the condition. And so the F2 phenotypes in this instance will be um, one healthy, corresponding to this one here, two carriers, these two here, and one sufferer, these two here. This would give you a 25% chance of producing um, somebody who's healthy, 50% chance you'd expect carriers, and 25% chance you'd expect sufferers. Now this is always done um, as by chance. It is possible for two individuals who are carriers for this disease in order to have, they could have four or five kids in a row cystic fibrosis. That would be unlikely um, because there's a one in four chance those two individuals producing one child for cystic fibrosis. But it, these numbers give an overall um, estimation or a probability of the likelihood of that outcome.